Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Asad Laju. Welcome again to a, yet another session of Avid Online. We completed two years on the 1st of April and have presented over 330 programs in our new online avatar. And as we transition to a mix of online and offline programs, we'd like to thank you for being part of this journey. For those who are joining us for the first time, a very special welcome. Please refer to the chat box for more information on Avid Learning and our platform. At Avid, we have strived to champion the cause of the arts and bring to our audiences the very best of the arts and culture, discovering and celebrating diverse urban cultures in the country with, in, with our mantra that learning never stops. We began the series Cultural Capitals, Future Legacies of India Cities in collaboration with Live History India and I'm presenting tonight's episode with them. With over 10 discussions on different cities, we've been celebrating the historical and current legacy of culturally rich, diverse and important urban centers across India. Through the series, we've met several cultural pathbreakers, and in this 11th edition of Cultural Capitals, it's no different. I'm delighted to welcome you to an evening with some of the vanguards of culture, changing the face of one of India's most ancient cities, Patna. Allow me to introduce the evening speakers, Curator Bihar Museum, Momita Ghosh, artist and founder, Studio Naresh, Naresh Kumar, founder, Potpelli Bihar, Kitchen, Pooja Sahu, Associate P uh, Professor Nift, uh, Vinayak Yashraj, and they will be in conversation with Deputy Editor, Live History India, Aparna Andhare. For more about each of our speakers, please refer to their very impressive bios that have been posted in the chat section. They should have been emailed to you also earlier. These experts on Patna will enthrall you with varying perspectives of this historical center of learning, from the lip-smacking delicacies to the traditional tales and folklores, from the stones and stupas that chronicle the past to the cultural institutions that house these stories. These speakers will unravel the mysteries of this cultural capital. Please note this session will last 75 minutes, followed by a 15-minute Q&A. Aparna will be taking questions, submitted in, so please keep submitting them in the Q&A box throughout the session. Just don't wait till the end. On that note, thank you once again for tuning in. Over to you, Aparna, and look forward to a fascinating session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Asad and Team Avid, and of course, Live History India too. This has been such an exciting journey to travel without having to leave air-conditioned confines, which I have to say is extremely important to me. Just now. So, as excited as I am um, to come back in, in you know, it, it, to meet you face to face, um, we'll now travel to Patna and um, a city that we're all making plans to visit. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll get to, we'll have a list of places to see, things to do uh, by the end of this session. So thank you all very much. Um, and I'm thrilled to join you for this ride. Patna, in, I'm going to share my screen very quickly. So we've we all know where Patna is, but you can see that right here on the map, fairly to the north um, and to the, to the north um, of Calcutta on the banks of a river. Patna, the name, um, where does that come from? So lots of people basically think that it, uh, the, the city is named after its goddess, um, who, and there's a Shakti Peet and in fact two important temples. But Patna could also uh, be derived from the word Patan, which means um, a dog or a port. And Patna has a very has always had a very thriving um, social, cultural, economic, political space. We've always heard about Patna in ancient texts. People have traveled to the city. It's one of those spaces that have been ext extensively discussed. And we also have um, archaeological um, evidence that comes from Patna that goes back several years. Material culture is extremely rich. So is architecture, art, um, and the stories that we hear. Now, if from the when the city was founded, the first time it was uh, when we know that it sort of goes back to the fourth century BCE and until about the seventh century, it thrives and then it goes into a period of lull and then comes back again um, in the Sultanate era, especially with someone like Sher Shah Suri who starts to build. He was born in Sasaram, which is about 160 kilometers um, away from Patna, and that's and, and the picture on the right is his mausoleum. So you get a set a certain. 
revival of Patna again in, in early modern India. Um, in, the, in 1666, Patna is extremely important because Guru, um, Guru Gobind Singh, who is a Sikh Guru, was born there and a Taf then gets established for him and is built by Ranjit Singh in the 18th century. This, of course, also then gets... Um, refurbished and things so what we see now is is a is a certain avatar of um of the taft but extremely important to the sikhs too um this city is because they it's an important port town you've got people from all over the world who are coming in and it also attracts therefore um artists and if there's a city that um the daniels have been to you can count on them to to depict it in the most beautiful picturesque style and um, this image of the city of course is um, is one of those Daniel's images that, that are very heavily circulated you can see the river you can see the boat um, you can also see architectural elements that sort of peek through that tell us um, stories about the city but now is not all um, beautiful port. It's about colonization. It's, it has also it, it has um, a dark history. It, um, on the right is where opium was stored. On the left is the is the iconic gold hub, which you can still uh, visit in Patna, where they were meant to um, hoard grains. And so we've got stories of famines. We've got stories of a dark trade that come in. Colonization also plays an important role. Um, and subsequently, it, it becomes a center for the freedom struggle as well. Um, as important as Patna's architecture is, one significant um, aspect about Patna is, is its archives. Um, and the Khudabaksh Library, of course, is perhaps the first stop that many scholars make um, when they're re looking up Mughal India or are looking for rare manuscripts. So it's a personal library that then the government also absorbs and becomes an important part of the city. Um, Painting traditions, it's not all high art, um, it's also um, traditions like um, the Madhubani style that, that becomes very important and continues um, its a, a flourishing in Patna. Um, we must also talk about multiculturalism, so I'm going to go back to this slide for a second and think about um, artists or the Patna Kalam that becomes very special, which is um, which is an amalgamation of Mughal styles, of uh, European styles that come through, but that become completely their own. So it's a, it's a new style that evolves. Um, it tells us stories about migration. It talks about uh, different kinds of patronage. It talks about knowledge gathering, about um, anthropological um, inclinations as well. So the Patna Kalam in itself tells us a lot about what is happening um, in the early modern era. Era, um, in the city and of course by the city I also mean regions that surround it um, and so Madhubani becomes important and then we come to perhaps two very special spaces um, following up from the Khudabaksh library the Patna Museum which is an important space of art and culture it's a repository um, and then an exciting new space the Bihar Museum that we've heard about and had people come and speak um, even here on Avid. So I'm going to make a make a quick um, shout out to Avid's programming. And if you go through archives, I'm sure you can find um, uh, old talks that discuss Patna Museum, um, uh, the Bihar Museum and its architecture and several adventures. So do look up Avid's archives uh, for more on, on Patna. But I'm going to stop here um, and, and invite our very special speakers. So what we'll do is we'll find out what keeps Patna buzzing, what happens, what is happening in Patna just now. And I'm going to make a segue from the Bihar Museum to one of the curators at the Bihar Museum here. So, um, Hi, Momita. Hello, hello. You, when we were chatting just before this, you said you've both in the old building and the new building. Yes, How exciting. Yes. So my first question to you before we start talking, uh, geeking out over museums, um, is what is your relationship with the city? You're not from Patna, are you? No, no, I'm not from Patna. I, uh, I'm from Kolkata. So as a good, a very good evening to all of you and who are listening to us. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk about. And so, and thank you, Apanda, for a wonderful introduction of city that we are actually sum up in our museum. That's the way we are storytelling in our museum. 
so if we see as uh, patna so i would like to share a bit of my childhood memory with you all that uh, what uh, dragged me to this city or uh, that uh, sometimes my family members used to come to patna for uh, some business uh, kind uh, things and uh, then i make a hue and cry to come uh, with patna because they are with their business trips so what uh, as a child what will i do and you know they have some kind of uh, different kind of uh, society or that time they have a different political situations so i was really makes you and try and all my family i will go to patna and go to and after that 20 years after that i am here so i can say i am but destined to come to patna and uh, when i told my uh, family that i am going to patna there is a new museum is coming up and i am going to work for there so they made a really what you are going to patna no you so people have a different kind of image from outside but when i came here i really had a different completely different experience as from starting from the day when i came to this city is actually i'm a student of a history so it fascinates me the historical backgrounds uh, always fascinates me in different layers so it's history his uh, all those good governance how those supreme knowledge of ancient indian history and how people are evolving and they are so lively uh, they are so uh, fascinating in that way uh, uh, and they are supportive uh, to me as well so is a different kind of uh, equation i have with the city mm-hmm. and uh, what i am today is uh, because of this city it creates uh, is uh, my identity as a curator with uh, and is uh, i really owe this place and i love each and every bit of this uh, being uh, born as a bengali now transformed as a writer's oh, quote and quote bihari uh-huh. and i <laughs> started loving i really like those cultures i really involved in these cultures and i find that it has a very a deep sense of their living they still uh, it's a very happy and living spaces people do uh, resilient to they have a faith in their own religion they believe uh, they do so this uh, kind of uh, attitude at actually attracts me and uh, is a wonderful relationship with the city i must say and uh, you know it's actually what uh, it's a make me some kind of expansiveness that gives me to my character that city uh, as added to so when you came as a child did you also come to the museum and no i never came as a you child i make you uh, i just came uh, to do work for this museum right so, and um, i can see that there's the, the the famous yakshi is behind you and yes you know, can she's peeping yes. from my back <laughs> so she's also watching over that's excellent yeah. um so your entire your your you've worked in patna you um um you're working at the bihar museum um can you tell us a bit about the museum and your work there yes i can uh, it's a very new happening place first of all i would say is very warm welcoming space we want to create and uh, here i just want to reconnect that it's a bridge to the past and the gateway to the future that's how we are uh, taking this whole space and is actually this museum is built to inculcate the bihari pride into the local people that what we had and what we are capable of uh, and what we can do so this is the uh, next slide so this is the whole space you can see this is very intimidating uh, from the outside but once you are into it you will find a vibrant color that actually represents bihar yeah and you can go through the second two slides these are all we have there's a wonderful landscapes we have and in the building all the corridors it's actually talk about that come and explore and in the corridor you may find some of the wow moment of your life 
and these are the some glimpses from a children gallery uh, one of the most uh, talk about galleries people do engaging things we have audio visuals we have different a very uh, popular kind of labels people could, um, actually children could uh, love to read and even you know when i saw that they are actually reading it's make people read it's really difficult like museum labels so we create labels and some way it tells the stories Mm-hmm. so it's really lovely and people love the space they just stroll they just roam and sometimes i come down from my office um, and i just wonder how people are behaving how they are liking the space apart from taking selfies <laughs> so they are actually <laughs> loving uh, the place and they are actually when they it's a experiential museum mm-hmm. it's not about the whole uh, world museum so yeah. it just as a A, a book we have that actually personification of the museum so mm-hmm. i would love to share with you all later on so it embraces there are lots of questions that i have especially about the children's part of, of okay. the museum we're all very excited to talk about this but from someone who's moved to bihar um as a child to somebody who is who was born there has also an old connection to um to the uh, the patna museum because apparently he used to throw cricket balls into it or went to fetch a cricket ball i'm going to talk to naresh next hi naresh hey, hi hi <clears throat> this is fascinating to be playing cricket um, as a child on the grounds so um tell us about about that experience and about your relationship with the city yeah <clears throat> thank you and hi good evening uh, all of you thank you every who uh, it is such a wonderful program today and we all are meeting here and thank you aisha to i mean made all the this beautiful evening so the city you know uh, actually my 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 home is little far from here my parents home is uh, is uh, the, the district called sitamari very close to nepal we share a nepal border but my father migrated to the city and uh, so yeah we have to be you know I, i and i grew up in the city where we have no space to play so we play at the museum or we play at the at the college ground like patna college or n college or patna art art and craft college that time i didn't know this is art school so but we used to play at patna museum old museum you know we not need to buy any ticket we just go and play cricket with friends but i am not a good cricketer so they send me the boundary to catch the ball and bring ball in the in the in the pitch again so it's my first encounter when i when i first time i visit the museum to to found the ball of the cricket team and then i found in the museum like that and nobody to ask you why you going there yeah. nobody no ticket nothing so i saw like a big colonial painting mm-hmm. that time, i mean later i know this is the colonial painting that time wow that's a beautiful ball and then patna kalam so this is the first thing being an artist to be you know like i think about okay art could be in this house you know before i was in in village like i saw folk art or traditional art or in ritual things uh and then later when i when i come to here to study uh of course you talk about the first like which i think if we grew up in patna we can't i mean this very dark memory about the gold ghar mm. patna has amazing beautiful architecture and when i was kid there is a ganga is alive in patna so the my my parents are the very ritualistic person so the, every month they went to the ganga for bath or for some ritual things but i am looking something else you know i am i am standing there or sitting there i am not very deeply involved in the rituals but i am my rituals is another thing you know like the boat is going and coming yeah and the school i read about the colonial history mm. so the, my mind is like very curious to be which boat coming from dutch or french or african you know the, all this this uh, so called cosmopolitan city you know i mean i still try to visit those part of 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 great uh, history which help me today to mm. you know to 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 walk yeah, in this yeah, absolutely 
So this was quite fascinating that the whole encounter that you have, that you grow up with the city and you and, and it, it's almost as if art finds you. Um, and I quite like the idea of playing cricket, except that the museum professional in, in me basically balls at the idea. I'm so glad you didn't break the nose of the Deidarga and Jiakshi. <laughs> so, but thank you. And and you and you've left Patna for for many years, and you divide your time, and now you're back in in the city for a while, aren't you? Yeah, pandemic back sent me back uh, yeah. because of the and also when I back, I uh, I don't know why I am engaged because city is change. Mm -hmm. It's really change. We are lucky. I always hit the art student who come here, and I try to go because Patna has no. Thank you to the Pooja Sahu here. He, she made a pot belly. So this is one of the, my favorite restaurants. Whenever I go, I took my friends there. We're so, going so, to talk about pot belly in a bit. So don't, <laughs> don't give out all our secrets. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but do tell me about, you, about your, the relationship between the city and, and your practice. So you, you, you can see this image, which I'm sharing here on the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, I got a fellowship in... in uh, very old school in France, in basic, I mean, which is in, in Paris, it's called Ecole des Beaux Arts. So uh, th this is this is, and and uh, you talk about the uh, my relationship with the city. So you know the very Patna Kalam. So the Patna Kalam uh, for me is I don't know how to paint Patna, Kalam, but yeah. So the Patna Kalam, but how do I paint uh, Patna Kalam? So for me, I mean, I you know. Contemporary translation engaged me more rather than any other uh, form of art. So the Patna Kalam for me is the first democratic art in the world where we paint people from the street. And I grew up in the city, so so almost on the on the street I grew up. I have no big house. I have family hangout, a family, uh, uh, you know, and businesses things. So I grew up on the street, in the field, in the government spaces. Mm. Uh, so these when I uh, and Paris, I explored a project called Black Rice. So where I try to find, and Patna for me is an immigrant city. Because the Patna, you will find people from the 38 district who come here to find good job. From Sita Mari to Madhubani to, to Mithlanchal to Bhagalpur regions. And same when I landed in Paris, I found, oh my God, it's my second home. People are from Africa, from Brazil, from Asia, from Africa. Mm. So, kind of my city, Paris. So, I try to do again Patna Kalam, but not in the traditional form. It's my Patna Kalam, where I'm painted yeah. coming from, you know, with the, you find a center in the boat there, the people coming from Africa or, or West uh, Europe. Yeah. They, they're doing job in the street. They're making city more powerful from the street. And that's also, I think, how you remember the city too. Yeah. And then and, and you can find the another things which you still come to Patna and you can see this tailor. And yeah. during the I get like really engaged with me, where I first time saw the dyed body on the street, on the on the tailor. And uh, you know, when I I immigrant on this last 12 years, 2008, I left Patna for higher study. Mm. And then I never back. Like I come here for ritual. Like right? if someone has died in my family or some chhat puja or holy, three times in the year. So, you know, it, it's also big questions being an immigrant. If I die today, you know, France or Bombay or wherever, where my body went. So the, the, the project I, I develop, it's called Hometown Anatomy. So this is the first work from Hometown Anatomy. You know, my, 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 my family not need anything what I learned from Bombay or Paris and whatever. They, they, they just need my body. And that's all about questions about the ritual performance, like three things, uh, body, death, and, uh, and, 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 and the space, yeah. being an artist. So my life is kind of, you know, investigation on this. And you can, you know, like death is... It's hard to imagine, but it's yeah. it's a very important ritual for whole world. So it's a very poignant work of art, especially Sorry? so now. Yeah, and and it is uh, and 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 that time COVID is like whole world. Like it's like every village people are thinking about the yeah. that, 
and the another book called three metaphysics of east village where i grew up you know bihar has a great uh, 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 script of urdu mm. you know so you can see the first painting where i i i grew up in the kind of slum area where lots of islamic traditions rituals i am participating that time mm. so you can find the first painting it's it's, it's about urdu uh, literature which i want to be addressed so agar mai if i am talking about you i can say five uh, word from urdu language you know yeah. because it's young ganga and jamuna tazheeb mm-hmm. we learn and the second painting second painting about i grew up is also like patna and my village it's called uh, in yeah. city so we have a very river bank so whenever you go to the river bank you put the stone yeah another things again see in the river bank uh, it's called ethnographers which is made- absolutely fascinating sorry i cut you off what were you saying no no i am saying this is the seven sculpture which are made under the hometown anthony uh, just during the covid right you can see mirror we we'll uh, talk about your your materials because i think that's, that's something i'm very interested in and we also have questions for you so we'll come back and we'll talk about the materials that you're 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 using and um and about home, hometown um anatomy in just a little bit because i think these are some ideas that we need to ho- unpack especially the rickshaw and the coffin my god um so thank you but let's hold on to that thought um you mentioned your friend and um and someone who's been nourishing but now for a bit and that's pooja who joins us um all the way from um the west coast of the united states who's woken up very early thank you pooja uh, for joining us pooja you have an old relationship with the city with the river as well um what is it that what is your relationship to patna i think my uh, relationship growing well i grew up in uh, uh, in muzaffarpur which is the north side of uh, bihar and it's the ganges that div- divides patna into two halves so i am from the other side and i have my i have memories of uh, of course crossing the river and that time we didn't have the mahatma gandhi setu the bridge yeah. so we used to cross uh, we used to cross the ganges in the boat we used to carry a little picnic bag and you know it was the most exciting part because i think i used to be, i was scared of the waters and uh, it was very deep then uh, and uh, you know and uh, it was also very exciting so there was that kind of adrenaline adrenaline rush that oh i'm going to patna and i'm going to be crossing this mm-hmm. and just to watch uh, just to look around and see uh, what patna was back then it's so different now and uh, the excitement of crossing it and going to the other side to to my nani's place uh, she um, you know we have a house in uh, shri krishnapuri and even the boring um, sk puri uh, this sorry uh, boring road and uh, so it was uh, that kind of memory which is very uh, hazy uh, but uh, i mean now i'm forging a stronger bond with the city because i travel there more often because of the fact that i have a restaurant in the museum and i am looking at patna very differently i am looking at it very closely now as opposed to the, the way i did back then because for me it was just going to my nani's place right. and uh, of course i grew up um, in uh, in a very different setup in bihar and it was a lot of i grew up around a lot of food a lot of hustle and bustle where people were scurrying around doing things guests dropping by unannounced i uh, had two kitchens uh, you know my grandmother's kitchen which which had mud stoves and uh, you know the mud walls and you could see the soot on the walls and my my mother had her kitchen where we could cook uh, non vegetarian food so there was so much going on in that little space mm-hmm. and uh, so yeah i mean uh, growing up days i have very fond memories of bihar and how we lived in a very close uh, close knit community where everyone knew everyone so that is you know i feel um, uh, you know just to be in that space was very comforting and to just know people and it was not the it was not like my home was my home it was like the larger community was my home so also yeah so patna is uh, a place now that i'm exploring because of the 
because I'm traveling and I want to know more about the culture, about the city. And uh, I don't know if I, what I should be talking right now. There's so much I've us, seen in the last. Do, do tell us what is it that you found when you said you look closely? What is it that you've, you've looked closely at and what did you find? Uh, I'm looking at, uh, you know, the way people live now and uh, sort of places I had never, I've never been to, which I started exploring. Like you mentioned, the Khuda Baksh Library. I wanted to do a little research on the food of the region. So I went to the Khuda Baksh Library. I mean, I didn't find a whole lot because uh, one part of their library was shut and they were sort of renovating and all. But just being there was, uh, it was a great experience. You know, it transported me to that, um, that era. You know, where I felt everything was uh, old and everything was so different. The energy was quiet. There was that tranquility in the air and there was a lot of in room where people were studying, doing their research. And because Patna has been a seat of education, so people have, I've always, I mean, I heard about it. I mean, I wasn't really into academics, but, uh, you know, the people who really are into academics uh, make it big in Bihar. It's either this way or that way. So, uh, it, and plus, you know, there were some spaces I visited, which was, there was a private museum. Talking about museums, you know, I I went to this private museum, which is called the Jalan Museum. Mm -hmm. And through some common friends, and uh, I happened to meet these people. And they have a beautiful collection of antiques from five generations they've been collecting. And uh, the guest list is quite uh, um, a guest list. I mean, you have uh, all kinds of people from across the globe who visited their museum. And it's really beautiful. It's by the Ganges. And uh, also they serve me really good food, uh, um, you know, That's traditional, important. authentic food. <laughs> yeah. So they were also very conscious. They were like, they were thinking I'm some sort of, you know, a uh, renowned chef, which I'm not. It's my mother who's a sh real chef. And uh -huh. they were, very, they served me like the, you know, there was a spread of things. And I also remember, I mean, particularly, I remember the Parval Ka Mithai, which is not my favorite, uh, but I had to like Parval bite Mithai. Yeah, there is something called Parval Ka Mithai because Bihar, in Bihar we eat a lot of Parval, which is pointed gourd. Yes. And of course, I love Parval in other forms. You know, like I... Sabzi. Yeah, like I, I have, we, we have, as, have it as Parval Ka Bhujia, or we have it as the, cho, we make Chokha out of it. But to have Parval Ka Mithai was a bit like intimidating for me. Like it was like, okay, I don't want to be rude. So I did bite into it and it wasn't bad. And then my mom told me how much she loves it. And I was like, oh my God, you should have been there. So um, there are many places that I'm also, I went to the Patna uh, Museum, the old mu museum, and it had that old school feel. I mean, the old world feel to it. It was a bit rundown, not a bit rundown, quite rundown, but the whole architecture is really beautiful from the outside. I mean, I, I think they are, they are going to restore it or whatever. Uh -huh. So that was amazing. And then, of course, I also uh, love uh, just, uh, you know, driving around for some uh, Liti Chokha, the local Liti Chokha and uh, street food that is there in Patna. I love shopping for Khadi fabric because there is a lot of, uh, you know, that in the city. So there's a lot that I'm doing. I, I love the Upendra Maharati uh, space in the museum. I love picking up knickknacks, you know, like, uh, also, I talk a lot. I, I keep, uh, you know, uh, picking their brain about, oh, where is this fabric from? Uh, you know, where is this painting from? So, I, uh, you know, when I started uh, going back to Patna, I also learned a little more about the art, like the Manjusha, the Tikoli art, or the Sujna work on the fabric, because I was a designer. So I get, I, I'm very, very drawn towards, you know, uh, different kinds of weaves and things like that. So it's, there's a lot of rich richness in the culture and craft section and the art section which is really amazing yeah so you've uh, put this image sorry what is it that we're looking at so you're looking at uh, this uh, this thing called kali mir chicken which is uh, again one of my favorites uh, it has it's uh, it has this amazing it's very peppery and uh, it's served with moong dal paratha mm -hmm. and there's a little bit of parval chokha on the side yeah yeah so so this is uh this is uh one of my favorite things in the in the restaurant and uh also something that i have grown up eating and then of course you see litty chokha which is the trademark dish 
which people i think when i started potbelly the only thing people knew was litty chokha and a lot of them didn't even pronounce it correctly and i was like no bihar is not all about litty chokha only there's so much diversity in the food and uh, the food is so complex and we love our food just that we i don't think we talk about it proudly we do eat it with a, we relish it at home but nobody really spoke about it and uh, so yeah so litty chokha is sorry is it very complicated to me Ah uh, yes, so you know, uh, well, I mean, liti chokha is not something you make on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not a part of your daily diet. Uh, yeah. So it's one. It's in occasions like someone is coming, or you know, you want to bake some liti. So it's uh, basically it's uh, uh, liti is uh, uh, this this wheat dough is uh, stuffed with spice uh, yeah. satu. You know, I don't know if what you, if you know about satu. So satu yeah. is roasted gram flour, mm -hmm. and now of course it's. people know it across uh, the cr uh, country but uh, yeah. back then pe people didn't know and they thought oh, it was some sort of dal or whatever but so it's spice satu and it is very complex as in we add a lot of spices to it we add uh, i mean i don't know if you want me to give out the recipe or whatever but oh. it's not <laughs> maybe another time because then i can go on and on and then of course it's baked uh, in um, uh, cowden in cowden cakes dried cowden cakes and uh, but we don't do that in delhi we uh, we bake it over we roast it over coal because right. uh, you know just to collect the dried cowden cakes is not that's not it's not convenient <laughs> Yeah yeah and yeah. It, there's a lot of smoke but it gives that really earthy rustic flavor if you do it traditionally Absolutely. and uh, yeah and there we have several chokhas mm. and there's a little bit of satu drink satu so satu is my favorite drink because there are times i don't i'm really scurrying around hustling uh, doing a lot of work and i and i don't have time to eat so i just drink a glass of satu cooler which is a meal in itself because it's high protein and it also keeps uh, you sort of your stomach cool in summer right and it's just the perfect uh, thing when you don't have time to eat it's a meal yeah. and a glass yeah, yeah it's a meal and self it looks beautiful oh is this um the restaurant yeah. yeah so this is the outdoor section of the cafe and this is my favorite uh, part of the restaurant and there's a beautiful tree which is almost like kind of falling and i'm every time i go there i'm like i hope it doesn't dry and fall because it just adds a lot of character to the space yeah. and also i love this area because you can hear the waterfall you know that the sound of water and it's very very i love uh, this this it adds a lot of that um, you know that sound adds a very calming energy to the space so people love eating in that in the section just that you know in summer it's it gets really scorching and humid and there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of flies and uh, mosquitoes so so you know like i just you know, i love this in winters yeah, yeah so it's a really used space in winters and i think it's a novelty to be having this space in the bihar museum um i was really skeptical of opening this restaurant here because i thought people would judge me and because people cook bihari food at home and they would say oh we cook it like this or or they would not would not want to pay a price for it because everyone eats it but then i was uh, pleasantly surprised because uh, people were coming back for more and i have a great customer base and it's growing and um, you know of course um, and also i feel it's helped me forge a deeper bond with the city because i have to come here right. and when i'm coming here then might as well learn a little more about the city and it's given me an opportunity to um, uh, learn about uh, the city and its culture um, you know get a more in depth knowledge about it and not a frivolous shallow uh, understanding of what the city is because there's so much depth to it just as the food i can imagine and there is the, there's depth to cuisine there's depth to people and of course it's vibrant um yeah. we we we'll, we'll come back to talking about pot belly um very soon and and with your relationship with the food we have our fourth panelist who's been waiting very patiently indeed thank you very much um munaik you have to you you also have a deep relationship um with with patna you've moved back to the city recently do tell us what is it that that you do yeah yeah, yeah. good evening aparna and uh, thank you to you and gratitude to all your team to have invited me for this session it's turning out to be such an interesting session listening to everyone over here uh, coming back to my relationship to the city oh, it goes back to the fact that i was born here and i've studied here and schooled here 
So uh, when I look back to my schooling years, I remember uh, my parents being a university professors at Patna University, and you know uh, it was it had such a vibrant educational uh, you know atmosphere. I remember the drawing room of my home always in the evening filled with professors, teachers debating and discussing in the V hours of the night, and we'll be talk telling our parents please send them away. We want a space, but then. now i realize that was a kind of an education that was happening informally within my home and within the vicinity of a colony and it was filled with this environment which was so rich uh, so uh, encompassing and it consumed the energy i remember cycling down the lanes of the city going to our schools i used i studied at st michael's here in this uh, in patna and i remember you know going to this region cinema every day uh, uh, sometimes in the weekend to watch these uh, english movies which will only come at uh, 9:30 in the morning to so remember watching the pretty woman four weddings and a funeral and so all such movies which only would come on this particular uh, cinema theater right. it was really rich yes aparna uh, you know, and i'm i'm wondering if this sort of multicultural environment continues and how is that um with with where you teach because you are um you're you're in an uh, you're at nist um and so what are what are these sort of things that you're doing is it still uh, yes uh, aparna uh, uh, you know uh, patna has continued with its vibrant culture of education so we have a list of educational institutions which have opened up in patna to start with we have a national institute of fashion technology we have an iit we have aims we have a national law school we have a premier um, management institute we have nit and there are many such universities which are opening up and bringing back the vibrancy and the culture that we had towards education but the change is in bringing in an environment where students the visual that you see you could see students here who have painted that wall in the background and these students are here from across the country they mm-hmm. are from bangalore they are from uh, you know uh, chennai they are from delhi they are from bombay they are from northeast they are from the interiors of bihar they are mm-hmm. from lucknow we have students from all over the country and nift is a space where you know uh, creativity is nurtured imagination is nurtured so one of the you know things that we do is as an exercise that we give them a little wall space they so they uh, you know they create a concept they create an imagination and they paint it themselves so this visual i really wanted to bring in because they have left an imprint which is so uh, multicultural in the sense that all these students are coming from across the country and i teach as an associate professor i myself have been educated from new delhi and uh you know i went to milan and study for a while then i came back and i worked in uh, delhi gurgaon and then i decided to come back to my hometown mm-hmm. and i was so happy with my decision and just at that time when nift was opening in 2008 and i entered nift uh, uh, as a faculty member uh, with a fashion design department and then with accessory design department and oh. i teach a lot of subjects uh, ranging from methodology design history design projects and many things right. so there's a question that has popped up right here um for you and this is also my cue to ask the audience um that that please do send us your questions uh, there's a q and a box that's live you can send them to us um anonymously if you wish but um the first a question that we have and i think it's a very interesting one is um how has your practice represented the city and the culture of patna did patna have an influence in you and in what way uh I'll, at this point the question has a uh, kind of uh, you know ignited me to uh, bring in the understanding that a nift as a national project is doing uh, something on fashion forecasting now okay. fashion forecasting is an idea where you know uh, trend forecasters interpret and they analyze what was going to be the fashion forecast for the next season so generally it was a activity which would come from paris or london or new york or tokyo now right. nift has taken the challenge to integrate and develop and evolve india's own fashion forecast and nift with having its 17 and 18 centers across the country and nift patna being one of those centers which is participating actively in generating and creating a fashion forecast which will emerge out of the local environments and the local culture and requirements of the 
people. And I, being the coordinator for NIFPATNA, I'm working with students and engaging them to capture and spot what is happening in cuisine, what is happening in literature, what is happening in arts, what is happening in lifestyle, what is happening in cinema, to bring in an environment where we create a fashion forecast for the national level. So nice. this is one very interesting project that we are doing. And uh, so, and that that you are leading that in partner. That's fascinating. Thank you very much. Is this? It looks like a very vibrant campus. Um, yes. I'm also going to now open this up um, to our audience and, uh, and and to the rest of our panelists, of course. Um, so thank you um, for your, Vinayak for your um, opening um, comments. What we're going to do just now is um, I have a few questions from the audience. So let's let's jump right in and let's start with uh, with Naresh. Um, Naresh, uh, there are there are two questions for you. First is they're very interested in listening to your comments on Paris. I'm going to add to that question by saying, how um, can you can you talk about your your experiences of Paris in relationship to the city um, and to the to to the city of Patna? And is there a is there a resonance? Is there a difference? Um, because I, I assume they're not similar at all. Yeah. So <clears throat> you know, like I'm. Um, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, luckily or what. Uh, uh, I think I believe in practice since my 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 I joined the art school because I, you know, I have a very uh, uh, fear of language, you know, fear of uh, I didn't go to the school, so I didn't have like lots of literature reference rather than my regional. So thankfully, what I read in my regional literature, which helped me a lot to understand other regions. Right. And and Patna and Paris, what I feel like is very similar when my, my father worked as in my father and mother also, because um, my father never walked what I saw. I have my, my father has a very small tea shop in the street. So my mother wake up in the morning and she does half of the walk. Then my father went. So, you know, uh, so they both walk here very hard. And while they are walking on the street, so the Patna street, as 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 Momita said, Patna has a very for discussing and debating and sharing the knowledge. So all the rickshaw wala and they have a restaurant actually, tea shop. So all the discussing a lot. So the, I still remember. I am a listener, and, and I think it helped me to be. I mean, the same I felt in Paris. A lot of vision. So the Paris, you will you will find if you're going to the dinner or lunch somewhere, if you are alone, if you are not invite the friend, just go and sit there in the restaurant. You will find other immigrants who will who maybe who will coming from uh, Tunisia or or uh, Ghana from Africa or from Sri Lanka, you know, or from Brazil, and they have a story which is still engages me to explore my practice in Paris rather than a big market or art market, other things. So for me, practice what I found in Paris, yeah, but now, of course, the difficulties because the art market and art supports, we have no idea. Right. That's quite interesting that you found um, a resonance. And, and I think a lot of us, when we think of Paris, we think of streets in Paris, you think of cafes, you think of, um, you think of a deep set culture of art. Um, that's quite, uh, that's really interesting to see that you ma that that ideas of, of home, of nostalgia, of identity, and of a cosmopolitanism sort of translate through so beautifully. Um, we have another question, and this one I think Momita should be able to take. Um, what are the okay. contemporary preservation efforts being made to preserve an uh, built and cultural heritage? And where do you see Patna and the Bihar Museum in this context? Okay, so is a, uh, a museum's primary job is to do the conservation. So we usually do collaboration with the 
archaeological survey of india we are the responsible uh, body to do the conservation in terms of world heritage so we have different uh, we have a registered uh, monuments in the bihar uh, archaeology department and we do usually do the documentation and we have some team they actually collaborate with different departments to do the, all this world heritage culture but yeah. one thing we must remember that is a joint effort not only the government departments will only able to do all the preservation and conservation but still we need to the public to engage with it so we are trying to create some kind of awareness program for them to uh, adopt and uh, monuments or a built heritage and create awareness that how we can preserve those uh, complex even i just want to share because we are renovating patna museum mm -hmm. so there uh, we had to cut uh, many trees you know when we uh, do development or we make uh, some architecture or some buildings we usually had to cut down some trees but there is a one specific tree was there and people used to come and they do worship in a specified specific days of the year so we have just uh in transplanted in a different part because it had to cut down uh, for different reasons so we try to preserve those living culture that people are coming doing pujas around those uh, trees so that's how we are the small efforts we are giving <laughs> as a museum and we need to the people should come and join with us in this ceremony yeah. um Tara has asked us a question that she visited several years ago and um, went to the room where the relics of the Buddha were. Um, does Patna Museum still have it? Have the relics come to you? Where is it? Pooja, do you know where the relics are? Are they? I'm sorry, uh, I just cut off. Do you know where the relics of the Buddha are that used to be at the Patna the Museum? that Are used to be there? at the patna museum it is still there but uh, we are making a place for it in the baishali right uh, it was excavated from baishali so there yeah. is a complex coming up in a few uh, one two years i guess oh, so wonderful. we are making a whole uh, stupa mm -hmm. and how it were built with uh, old stones and uh, that will uh, stay more right. and so there uh, those relics will be transferred to that uh, awesome. baishali where it is excavated from that's fantastic that also means tara you have to come back come to see the bihar museum come to see Vaishali. Uh, that will be lovely. Thank you. Pooja, everyone um, is very keen um, to also hear from you and to ask you, um, when, we're, when we talk about Patna, we talk about other places, we're also thinking um, about a larger shared history and culinary traditions basically um, bring us all together. So someone's asked us, how important is it and how have you safeguarded culinary traditions of your city and culture? Um, do you want to talk about where your recipes come from and, and some parts of your research as well? Sure. So, um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, yes, uh, I have been documenting. To begin with, I started documenting all the recipes from my mother because she knew a bunch of them and uh, I've also grown up eating. So I would ask her the various things that I've eaten over the years or things that my grandmother cooked or things that she learned from my um, uh, grandfather or her grandparents and her mother because she started cooking when she was all of 12 and she was yeah. really um, uh, she loved it not not for anything else not because she she had to do it she was um, um, she came up she she comes from a fairly okay family where she had retinue of servants and all but it was the love for food the passion for food that drove her to do that and so I documented uh, from her and then I speak to a lot of so all these uh, because Bihari cuisine was not really we didn't have any restaurants before I started so my reference point was my family recipes and uh, also I traveled um, to uh, you know my mother's village where I met her relatives and they cooked for us and I took recipes from them 
and then of course there's a lot of street food culture so walking around uh, in the city or just uh, so you know these are heirloom recipes as i would call it because they've been passed on from generations and uh, documenting it is very important otherwise uh, you know it will be lost into oblivion and uh, we'll never get to taste those uh, wonderful recipes because uh, it's cooking bihari food is it requires a fair amount of time it's uh, compared to other uh, cuisines we spend a lot of time cooking the food and yeah. not everybody has the time you know because the uh, the the cooking techniques are uh, very very refined i mean of course it's bihar so people we people think of everything else that is not so positive but they don't really talk about the food that has so much depth and co- complexity uh, because and is slow cooked over uh, on mud stove still a lot of people the way they barbecue the way they marinate overnight and uh, prepare their curries you know there's something that my mom uh, um, cooked uh, the other day because we were doing a fine dining uh, concept in delhi and i said i want everything i want to serve everything that i haven't sh- uh, served yet so she made made something called arbi ke patte ka pakoda and you know then we got arbi ka patta from uh, musaf uh, from bihar to delhi um uh, overnight and uh, we marinated it we rolled it we we let it sit for one whole day and then we prepared it so you know it takes a lot of effort to do that and uh, it's very important to document these recipes because they are a part of the rich heritage of bihar and i think i have taken the onus of doing it and it's a lot of pressure also because people are uh, now because pot belly is one of the first uh, restaurants uh, serving bihari food so it puts a little bit of a pressure on me to to do that and i feel responsible people come in and start to share their recipes because i'm quite sure that between yeah. different communities um for, you know if you focused on one family's history then um everyone will also the minute they eat they they, they share the way their parents yeah they do they do share and i do listen to them very intent like i do listen to them and i'd make a note or if i'm visiting some yeah relative not only relatives but their friends or whatever so i listen to them the way they cook it it's very interesting yeah and that's how an archive is built um and 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 to build an archive through food we're all here for that absolutely and we're looking forward to more um thank you i'm going to um go to vinayak next and pushkar asks um thanks for bringing um he's talking about education and and says thanks for bringing this um into uh, the conversation um he wants to know um if patna is still a very good educational hub um and how do you think i mean you know it's one thing to set up institutions and it's another thing to sustain them um and and that has become a challenge i, I feel um what has your experience be, been so far uh pertaining to the question and i'll speak through the lens of myths and uh, yes uh, there was a time in 2008 and 2005 where these institutions were being set up but i can tell you there's no substitute to work and sincerity and research mm. academic research and that is what is happening at nif and that is why nif patna has sustained its position of being the leading institute of fashion of any kind which has opened up post 2000 it tops the rank and right. across from uh, the institutes which has opened up since 1980s it is fourth it's it's sorry it's fifth rank in 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 the national uh, uh, map so what i'm trying to say is there is no substitute for consistent sustained effort that we need to maintain and engage students provide them an environment where it's very fertile for them to engage with activities academics industry so that they find the right platform to then nurture off whatever they want to do in terms of their ambition future studies or whatever that's exactly what nif patna is doing as well i'm wondering if this you know when we talk about a, a lot of this outside in approach what happens to local traditions like for example how is it is there an engagement with craft traditions absolutely um, absolutely how does absolutely. that happen absolutely absolutely you know that again a nif has this very rare and interesting and unique initiative which is called the craft clusters so every nif center and particularly i'll talk about nif patna has this initiative called craft cluster in which we engage mm-hmm. with the craft communities of patna and around bihar there's something which i want to mention which is yet not been mentioned in this panel is called bavan booty 
Now, this particular craft, which was languishing on, on the verge of extinction, and a lot of these, uh, NIFT is taking a lot of initiative in working with those artisans, working with those craftsmen in Nalanda, and reviving and bringing back the very inherent, uh, unique uh, craft textile tradition of Bhavan Bhuti. And there are many such craft techniques like Sujani, like Sikki, like Manjusha, like Madhubani is very famous and Mag mm -hmm. Bhagalpuri silk, of course, is very famous. So there's a whole rich and of course, Patna Kalam, which was again on the verge of extension, wooden toys from Patna city, again, very important craft practice of Patna and around Patna. And all of this are being worked upon through our craft initiatives, engaging the students, engaging the right stakeholders and the industry. That's fascinating. Thank you very much. Um, there's a question for Naresh. I'm going to toss this to Naresh at this at, um, at this minute. Um, Naresh, can you explain your visual perception about colonial history of Bihar in context to Gandhi and Gandhian philosophy? That's a very pointed question. Do you want to um, to take a shot at it? Yeah. Uh, would you like to repeat the questions? Yes, I, I will. Um, hang on, where did it go? Can you explain your visual perception about colonial history of Bihar? We were talking about Dutch uh, buildings in the past, but in um, also in context of Gandhi and Gandhian philosophy. So we, we break this up into two. Um, do you engage at all with, with colonial Bihar? I know that there have been buildings that have been pulled down. Um, what are these spaces? Are you engaging with those? Um, what what I'm saying, like, you know, like, if you see, like, lots of conversation happening with the architectures in the space. Yeah. And then, uh, end of the colonial, Gandhi, I mean, Gandhi came here. Mm. And when you see the entire, uh, 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 entire, like, city has, uh, if you see my drawing, I mean, especially in the behind in this also, the big canvases. And I'm I use a mica, you know, materiality. So when the Gandhi suddenly came here, I thought the whole architecture was still, and then Gandhi came, and it's again another conversation start. Mm -hmm. you know, what I'm seeing, what I'm reading, and the body is suffered to argue, arguing something with the within the some time frame, right? So the entire moment has a change, and if you see like how blue indigo made an impact. Before we use also in blue, in village, we know lots of uh, 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 colors, industrial colors, so we use pigments. Yeah. So what I take a reference, it's it's conversation of, of, of the architectures and the human mm -hmm. forms. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, these two key, you know, help me to make a kind of conceptual idea, which like if I'm, uh, when I when I moved from uh, Patna, I went to Delhi and, and then Paris, and then back to uh, Bombay. Mm -hmm. So if you see the Bombay and Paris have the same gestures. Right. If you are at six o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. if you're in the church gate or the VTA station mm -hmm. or saint Lazare in Paris yeah. or Arjun North in Paris, so you can see the same gestures. Mm. You know, they're all architectures with a similar architecture. The people are doing their rituals. You know, right. these rituals, like the rituals which not my religious ritual, ritual which whole world today doing the same rituals, like a work, alcoholic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they're the, secular in that sense. So, so that's 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 helped me, and this is the kind of depart point for me to make this transform this ritual in, in, in my, my canvases or my drawing. Let ask you a slightly non sequitur question here, um, which is, Nash, what are the spaces that, and, and because you've grown up in the city and now you've traveled and come back, what are the spaces for art that you've engaged with? Where do you go to see art? Where do you go to, um, to be inspired as well? Are there, like, are there any like, specific places in Patna that you go to for to look at art or to be inspired? I go to the river bank basically. And uh, and the one, another architecture is Golghar. Because in the Golghar made is not for joke. It's a very significant idea which British has, you know. Yeah. 
the british also take something and also give us many things like we have a very uh, brutal uh, like very tragical uh, what we call crisis of food you know in in this regions bihar and Bangla, i mean orissa so that they build this architecture and if you if i go to the river bank you can see there's a ghat mm. and i also show something which, which which says pahle ki ghat you know in the history i i read there is a lots of boat like millions of people standing i mean they going from here to calcutta in videsia ghat and then yeah. they went to uh, south africa north africa and then yeah is pahle ka ghat no i mean it's 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 fact we went for the brutal colonial history but mm. if, we, if i read today there is a morris incident bihari region right what in rashtrapati from chapra you know his ancestor from chapra from bihar yeah so it, it's a kind of you can see this desher of pain people went from here as a as, as a lake yeah in taking a tools in hand going to the farming but what did doing today you know what what they they having a pen in their hand you know yes. they, they try to participate in the global uh, global domain Absolutely. as leaders so yes. so the certain idea we had in part we try to visit that excellent absolutely thank you thank you for that momita i'm going to ask you a question here and it's a, it's a slightly abstract question but i think we can we can focus especially specifically on on bihar and patna um where uh, an attendee asks us um traditions change as time comes and how do you preserve authenticity then um and as someone who's also working with material culture of for uh, material and visual culture of the region um would you would you like to answer that um when when yes. traditions uh, change how do you preserve authenticity actually i just want to mention that the it's our culture is a whole it is a living culture we actually live with the old and the new world Mm-hmm. so we, if we see in our kitchen so there is a mixing and there is a silver as well so we are the culture is a living tradition but mm-hmm. something has evolved not changed completely yeah so what the authenticity what we have a material culture is basically from the excavation or by chance discovery right. or something like that so we have different kind of patterns to mm-hmm. identify to uh, rect- uh, know the provenance where yes. they come from how what are the uh, designs that uh, actually uh, evolved and uh, so there is a, le- a different kind of uh, layers there mm-hmm. i can put that this is uh, this uh, art or piece or this is these artifacts particularly to this period yeah so uh, and the madhubani traditions what we used to have in earlier we went to pandra maharati they have a fascinating uh, uh, they uh, collections but we have never seen that mm-hmm. and what we did in our regional art gallery we mm-hmm. took those designs from there and yeah. gave the artist now to mm-hmm. do the uh, renovation to do their own artwork Yeah. So is, they are putting their old uh, things. They are seeing. They have those knowledge uh, traditions that transfer from one. And folk art is basically they are run into their uh, blood. Yeah. They learn from their grandparents, parents. So traditionally, when we are there is two kind of uh, material culture. One is we can say the excavated materials and others, and other the folk art and culture that is living with us as always. so much happens through multiculturalism through cultural encounters natma's yes. question was very interesting um where she was she wants to understand the multicultural ethos of the city and the evolution of the patnas you know from patliputra to patna is this something that we get to see at the bihar museum yes we will see the stories actually mm-hmm. we uh, history we always don't like frankly speaking and people don't like to visit museums because it is a dusty boring place but all of the old uh, simply old sometimes but i will tell you why you will come to bihar museum 
because it's a beyond the date and the name of the kings or queens Yes. so uh, it will tell you the stories that actually change the discourse of the history mm-hmm. and give those incidents in terms of architecture in terms of religion in terms of politics in mm-hmm. terms of art and culture so yeah. we will focus on the stories and yeah. we what we have in our collection we are actually actualizing uh, that uh, artifact mm-hmm. with the other materials other uh, secondary medium we yeah. want to focus i just want to mention here one thing that uh, we have some artifacts from kaimur mm-hmm. and mundeshwari area so mundeshwari a temple is a gupta period temple and is still a living temple people used to do uh, worship still now mm-hmm. so what we did we did a uh, uh, recreation the first facade of the uh, temple and mm-hmm. put a 3d projection mapping yeah. to do the whole architectural thing am i audible i think no, i can hear you i can hear you yes and we can put uh, all the 3d projection mapping and we put our collection uh, the uh, sculptures from that particular that re- uh, region mundeshwari region would put all these artifacts along with those projections so right. people could understand that those artifacts are actually coming from the temple or the temple complex we used to have absolutely so, so that's how we are uh, contextualizing and multiculturalism obviously is there yeah. because uh, from starting from magadha uh, they ruled from what uh, it is beyond what we have right now it's more more uh, mm. there the and after the... a long uh, uh, space and after uh, gupta you know they ruled even pala they ruled to bangladesh mm. from the and uh, south uh, they goes down so it's a whole lot of things that coming and even after that even after yeah. 12th century ad we are and here we also highlight that we have a gallery called gallery c mm-hmm. that we have the confluence of different religion mm-hmm. from hinduism buddhism jainism sikhism, sikhism. yeah uh, and even the sufism the maner is the place where the uh, evolved Sikh, yeah. uh, sufism uh, the gallery is born yes uh, yes so we have those galleries that the confluence of religion and they have their own way to tell you that the about the peace about the, those um, spiritual culture that we have so several stories get told in several ways and i i, I think that an evolution of of a region is hard to map and we're very keen on making a trip to the patna museum to bihar museum to see these stories being told so thank you for that um pooja there's a question for you um and that is what are most popular foods with locals versus with tourists and my follow up question to that is if someone's coming to um uh, the museum and if someone's coming to pot belly what should they ask for uh so you're talking about places they should visit for food in patna just uh, food food items food food Dishes items fine beyond uh, the yeah. yeah beyond liti jogha yeah. so you get liti jogha in that morya lok area and uh, it's fun to just stand there and eat uh, you know mm-hmm. uh, the uh, you know it's a very humble experience and then also you have uh, like something like khaja there's a khaja market very close to the patna uh, old patna museum mm-hmm. and a lot of people when they are traveling to patna they carry a whole lot of khaja for their um uh, you know for their relatives or for a bigger yeah. gathering and things like that and then also you have a lot of street food you know which um, i really like the the rolls and stuff but that is one thing but you also like in patna city you get something called chhene ka khurjan uh, chhene ka khurjan uh, Kurchen, Kurchen, and the it's very popular. And there are yeah. other some some other places also where you get, um, uh, you know, Manir ka ladu, and uh, then you get um, I may be missing something. You get Tilkut, and uh, there is in uh, Bidupur, Vaishali. Uh, uh, sorry, no, in uh, Kushrupur, there is it's very popular for satu. So they make this particular satu uh, drink. it's uh, with uh, the way they make it spicy or however you like it and then 
um then there is also yeah so they have a lot of there's some places like in vidupur there's this chene ka um, um you know danedar is called chene ka danedar or something and so there are many i mean it's mostly you won't go to a fine dining space to find great food in bihar unfortunately um if you want authentic bihari food but if you want to experience uh, just uh, uh, driving to these little little non descript spaces to have this or that it's a great experience right it sounds yeah. uh, like there's a there's a vibrant food culture um yeah i think so i'm going to you know start to 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 bring this conversation to wrap this up a little bit um and i'm going to start with you pooja because we have you here what aspect of the city is dearest to you um and and do you think that appeals to locals you know i like i told you my connect with the city is mostly uh, my nani's home but my it's the museum really that uh, i you know there's a lot to learn from the museum like um, um uh, you know momita mentioned and there's it's a whole it's a seat for culture it's a hub for that it's a cultural space where you can know about the heritage the history yeah. um the crafts um from upendra maharati like I, i always engage with the people there and to know about the weaves of different regions um you know like they mentioned the various uh, um you know the terracotta art even um, um you know some um uh um, sure. uh, various kinds of tikuli manjushas yes. sujni yeah. and all of that and also i feel like some things that we haven't really mentioned here which i would like to so there's a piece of information which a friend of mine who comes to port belly is a journalist he mentioned and he said you know it's the the dutch era buildings which you have kindly you kindly you you, you kind of mentioned but uh, we were not specific is the patna co- collectorate which has been a sort of a controversial um, uh, talk and uh, there was some talk of demolishing it and all and people are signing petitions to hold yeah. the government from doing that and of course the supreme court also uh, put a stay on the demolition mm-hmm. which is a great thing and also there is that uh, the uh, the thing the opium go down that you mentioned that's mm-hmm. also the dutch era um the um, um building yeah. and also a part of the patna college um, the administration building is also um you know the dutch era building so we have a lot of interesting spaces that i would like to connect with and i would like to be a part of the you know the conservation yeah. in patna because there it, patna has these interesting spaces that be, make it that could make it a hub for people to come from across the globe to Absolutely. see and to get a feel of the history of you know of yes. the bygone era Absolutely, and I think that the the, the Bihar Museum um, food and several kinds of heritage. I'm going to do a very quick rapid fire here. Thank you, Pooja, for this. Um, moment of favorite place to go to in Patna, and if there's one thing that we should do, and do not say the your museum, what <laughs> people come and see. And- uh the ganges the bank of the ganges i am when i'm ready to tell you that museum but, but uh, the, the museum ganges, you take for granted the museum is on top of the ganges yeah and so you can go to the ganges and they have a, you can do the boat ride they used to do some uh, evening aarti so that's a nice place to hang on Okay. And uh, that reminds me about the Kolkata. We used to do the yeah. all those things uh, along the Grand Ganges. Everything is connected so to the river. Yes. Is connected. Yes. Absolutely. When I, what is your one recommendation? Okay, I'll I'll borrow uh, uh, my time from here and say two. Uh-huh. One is this entire entire street around Gandhi Medan, which okay. has its own old flavor. It has retained its own flavor of this mm-hmm. old. you know this this place called the uh, where you get these old books old textbooks old novels and you will just go like a flea market for books mm-hmm. and then you have these uh, kalidas rangale there then there is old reserve back of india building there and then there is this biskuman bhavan and the maurya hotel complex and then these new things which have emerged across around the gandhi medan area new cafes barista cafe coffee day and there are many things gyan bhavan coming up over there and there's old historic shri krishna memorial uh, auditorium which we remember from our childhood days 
Uh-huh. So this, that is one and one thing which i really want to bring into this conversation is this very you know rickety but in a narrow lane uh, which starts from ashok rajpath and goes towards the old patna city area <laughs> it's difficult it's uh, it's best uh, visited during the winter time but it gives a glimpse into the historical aspect of patna right to the paschim darwaza and right to the jalan palace museum which uh, yes. someone was Jalan-Tabha. mentioning in this uh, yes. yeah Yeah, so this entire lane. I mean, mm. these two things I would re- definitely recommend uh, if you really want to have the glimpse of the city. Wow, wonderful! And you've also, um, by chance, answered the tough question of what drives everyone yeah. um, who are living outside Patna to come back in. Evidently, it's all this and more. Um, Nareesh, quickly tell us. Asad has appeared. Which, which is my cue uh, to 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 start wrapping up. So, what is your recommendation? and is there something that you really like doing yeah in the city lots of poet lives poet poet oh yeah so yeah. If, if you get a chance or 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 good uh, i mean in uh, good uh, literature or like mm-hmm. writer lives here like usha kiran khan yeah. uh, 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 like one of the very Al- important alok alok dhanwa alok dhanwa is also and uh, uh arun kamal is also there arun kamal is also there so we have after covid we also lived some of the artists like i made a small studio there is ranjita there is uh, another artist um, um uh, uh, so we have to come and meet these artists do we yeah, like lots of is visit the studios and visit do uh, poets mm-hmm. it would be fun and i think that's something that we can do from where we are to to look for literature and art and poetry um on on our computers and order books so second hand book markets yes um and also new books and one thing is patna has a very great uh, culture of theater you know the kali uh-huh. they do it from heart not for any single money or something like that it's amazing culture that's another thing on our list then thank you very much uh, asad there is we can we can keep talking all night long there are questions to be answered and there are i i think um, you know we can keep going on and on and on but i can see the time is running out and you're looking impatient a little bit thank you to our wonderful speakers for sharing such uh, interesting insights on this uh, on this uh, on the series and on the city you know i love this series i mean you know it's just it 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 just creates a to do on my bucket list for all these wonderful places that are cultural capitals of india that if you haven't visited or we have to revisit to rediscover what is happening in in those places and i mean we have such a wonderful representation of a panel that's so multifaceted and doing so much interesting work to push the envelope forward in a way so thank you to our wonderful panel and aparna you are spectacular as always um i mean if i tell her that she it just go to her head so let's just move on from there but thank you thank you aparna and 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 you can you know we can all get together and eat khaja and have sattu I I read mean, lots of many more, but I can't read my writing. Mandir ka laddu, mandir ka laddu. Mandir, mandir, mandir ka laddu. Mandir. I can never read my writing. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. Why don't you all come and we'll meet at the pot belly, and I'll get all these interesting sweet desserts of uh, Bihar in one place. We need some new menus to come, Pooja. We really need some new menu from you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Tried almost all. I know. I know. That we are saying, and we don't, don't want the one on the grill. <laughs> I have tried almost all, all of your menus, so now is a new thing. <laughs> But Pooja, we want them done in the cow dung. We don't want it in the, on on a for on sure, a. For sure, that's that's. It'll it'll be a great experience. I'd love, love to do it. that. Thank you so much. Thank you to our partners, Live History India. I mean, they've been so so cooperative. Mini and Akshay and and uh, Aparna. I mean, this is the eleventh episode, and we're still going strong. We have two more planned. Um, but thank you to our audiences for being here in such great numbers. You know, now that the world has opened up, at least in India, I know it's difficult to sit behind your computers versus go and experience the, the real world. At least in Bombay, we have Art Night today. So a lot of our patrons were normally here are saying send me the link. So so we're going to be posting this on YouTube and we'll have many more people experiencing this wonderful conversation, learning so much more about Patna. 
but you know with avid learning never stops and um, you know we had planned many many online programs and offline programs so the next one is or uh, is another wonderful series we've we started during lockdown sustainably now anchoring the blue economy it's on uh thursday april uh, 21st uh, followed by many more so to 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 find out more about these programs just uh you know check out our website or stalk us on social media but thank you once again uh, for being here being part of avid online's journey the two-year-old journey and uh, hopefully we'll have many many more sessions uh for in the year to come thank you very much have a good night